by and through. Yeah, it's good to see all of our smiling faces today. It's good to see all of you here ready to worship the Lord. Our flowers in worship this morning are from Pam Conklin in honor of Audrey Fitzgerald today. Um, some announcements this morning. Uh, we have a little bit of sad news to uh, relay to you. Uh, Hermione's mom, Tammy Norris, uh, passed away uh, early last evening. So uh, our prayers and condolences go out to Hermione's family. And uh, I don't think they have a, um, any a celebration of life set yet, but uh, uh, we are to be on the lookout for that. But uh, just condolences and prayers for Hermione's mom and Hermione's family today. Um, we want to thank Karen Barr. For stepping in for Lillian today. Thank you, Karen. <clears throat> a little update on Lillian. She is doing well. She's doing better. And uh, we're looking to maybe coming back next Sunday. So uh, we're looking forward to that. We are uh, saying hello to all of our folks online. Everybody turn around and say wave. Hello, hello, hello. We are glad to have you here today. Let's see, we also have an announcement. Oh, um, if you look on your insert, on the announcements, look on the section where it has the, the week at a glance, the dates to remember at the very bottom. That is our Palm Sunday, March 24th, Maundy Thursday, March 28th, Good Friday the 29th, and 31st is Easter Sunday. And on April 21st, it will be uh, my installation here all with you, so it's an exciting day as well. And you are all invited uh, to be here for that. Also, where is Don Mum? Where is Don? Don, come on up, buddy. Come here. So yesterday, last night, Don Mum was inducted into the Independence Area Chamber of Commerce Hall of Fame. Do you have a speech prepared? I do not, but it was really an honor. You know, yes. Oh, I'll get you the microphone. I'll just yell on After I finished accepting it, it was like, wow, why didn't you say this? Why didn't you say that? It's like, you know, your mind doesn't think of all those things, but um, it, it, <laughs> it, it was hum humbling and exciting all at once, you know. It was like, oh, my God. I kept saying, wow, wow, is this really happening? Because it, it is an honor. So um, thank them very much. Whatever, however they decided, I'm happy. So thank you. Buddy. Anybody else have any announcements or prayer requests? Come on up, Judy. I just wanted to give an update on our uh, job search for a new church office administrator. We do have the job posted on Indeed now. We're getting some response there, but we feel that word of mouth um, is probably one of the best ways to find people that might really fit here. So we would encourage each of you to get the word out to people that you know or you know, give a nudge in the direction um, um, of maybe applying for this job or uh, you know, anything you can do to help. Um, we will be sending out an email that will send, have a link to the job posting on our website once we get that done. But anyway, we want you to know we're in process and we're very hopeful that God has somebody waiting for us in the wings. Thank you. Yeah, Tuesday morning was quite interesting here by myself. It was quite the dumpster fire by myself. But we had Janet saved our lives this week. So thank you, Janet, for jumping in and helping out in the office. Anyone else this morning with an announcement or a prayer concern or a joy? 
Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Wait. Do I? No? Okay. Everybody good? Oh, good luck for the archers who are participating. So is Aubrey and Roman? All right, Aubrey and Rowan today. What? Okay. How about you tell everybody? Toby and Jasper and Rowan and Aubrey won't be here because they'll at State Archery with my dad. Awesome. Yeah. So lots of prayers for our state archers today. You're not talking about me, right? Okay. Okay. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me in our call to worship. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, God flows glory into our hearts. The law of the Lord revives the soul. The word of God makes a simple life. Let all who thirst come to the waters.
the litany of confession. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. We walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped in our own concerns. God of grace, help us to admit our sin, so that as you come to us in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, and receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Take some time for some personal confession. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Therefore, consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. This morning we invite you to turn in your hymnals to what page? 14. Page 14 for the Apostles' Creed. Now let us all affirm our beliefs together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, and the life, and the life everlasting. Amen. We invite you to stay standing for our next hymn, number 397. Peace of Christ be with you all. We invite you to turn to your neighbors and say good morning and welcome to worship.
Let's come to God together in prayer. Oh God, by your Holy Spirit, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We'd like to invite the little children up front. Okay, my question today, who in your life loves you? Mom and Dad. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, one, let's go one at a time. Friends, God, Jesus. What? Family, friends, God, Jesus. Okay, who else? Mom. Who? Mom and Dad. Mom and Dad. What about you, sir? Who loves you? Mm, your babies. The baby? You say your little brother Brecken, he loves you? Yes. Yeah, what about your older brother? Uh, no. Oh. He, he never loves kisses. He just likes hugs. He lo- your, brother, your older brother loves hugs? Yeah. No, yeah, everybody, everybody likes a good hug. Yes, ma'am. Um, I love myself, my parents, uh, my uncles, my aunts. My cousins, my friends, uh, okay. grandma and grandpa. That's a good amount. Sylvia, how about you? Who loves you? Come over here. Come over here. Um, my mom and dad. Okay. How about you, Leah? Our, my family. Okay. So do you do you? Hold on, hold on. Do you think that any of these people that you said? You think it's hard for them to love you? No. Who said yes? No. Yes. 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 No. Okay. Hold. All right. All right. All right. All right. Slow down. How much sugar what do we have this morning? Okay. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you think it's easy for these people to love you. It's not, well, at least you're being honest. I mean, maybe that's, maybe that's something you guys are causing. It's easy. It's hard. Oh, yeah. So, in, okay, Shh. hold on, hold on. In our lives, we have people that love us, and it doesn't take anything for them to love us. It just happens. In today's scripture, Jesus is talking to people, and he says, you love me because you clothed me, You gave me food. You helped me when I was sick. All the people that you just said probably help clothe you, take care of you when you're sick, and they also give you food. But the people that Jesus said this to were like, wait a second, we didn't do that for you. And Jesus says, well, yes, you did, because you did it for somebody else. So in this life that we lead right now, We love people every single day, and we love people, and it takes nothing out of us to do it. We just do it. It's on instinct, right? And what what are we doing today? Loving. What is this? What are we doing? Can do Sunday, which means you guys are taking collections. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys are taking collections for people because you are doing amazing things for somebody else. You are showing love for somebody else that Jesus would want you to do. Amen? Okay, one at a time. Go through the congregation and find that food. Okay, well, you know what? How about we drive it back in? You want to help me pray over the the cart when it comes back? And then you can drive it out. How's that sound? Huh? Oh, Casey, go get some pizza right there. 
I see lots of people with their hands raised. Hey, Kason, 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 Kason. You got a pretty heavy bag there. How's it looking back there? Anybody else have anything to put in the cart? Okay. All right, how about we turn her, turn her around? How do you think? Be careful. Yeah, don't let your toes run over. All right, come on up. We're going we're to pray over it real quick. Another successful can-do Sunday, it looks like. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our hands on the cart. Come on up, Kason, come on up. Let's put our hands on the cart. I don't think there's room. Okay. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being able to do this for other people. We want to thank you for the love that you show us unconditionally. And we want to always ask that we love unconditionally for other people. And all God's children said? Amen. Amen. All right. Let's turn this baby around. Baby. Yeah, that's baby. Can I take the baby? Be careful. Um, all right. The scripture this morning is from Matthew 25, 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the, one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. For they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick 
or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for the one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we walk through this journey of Lent together, I'm hoping that you have noticed a pattern over the last few weeks. In uh, week one of Lent, we delved into our wildernesses uh, and uh, what we need to go through in order to come out the other side with the Holy Spirit. And last week, we talked about how important it was to take up our own crosses, knowing that denying self was needed, even though that cross might be a heavy burden. And this week, I thought it would be appropriate to see how we put these things into action with the people around us. How do we show the example of Jesus to everyone? How do we show perfect love? I wish it was easy to be able to give love to everyone no matter what. I wish it was extremely easy to give love to people who have wronged us. I wish it was easy to give love to people who continue to never to give us love back. The only way we can learn to love is because Jesus Christ first showed us perfect love by sacrificing himself for our, our sin. And Jesus did not preserve himself, or even though we often try to preserve our own lives instead of others, but this love that Christ is talking about is more or on another level. Christ is talking about what we would call unconscious love. In the gospel today, Christ is speaking profoundly and to the point about unconscious love. He talks about when he comes back, he is gathering all of the nations and he is going to be going to separate the people from another. Christ says that the sheep will be on his right hand and the goats will be on the left. And Christ then says that the sheep on the right are the prosperous ones. What? The sheep. In today's language, the word sheep is used to describe, describe someone in a negative light. We hear it a lot in the political climates of today. The word sheep is used to describe a person who doesn't have a mind of their own or a thought of their own. A sheep in today's world is someone who follows the wrong path and cannot possibly have a thought that is worth anything. A sheep in our vernacular today is someone who just blindly follows without thinking for themselves. However, in this scripture, the sheep are the ones that are looked at in the positive way. Jesus tells them that the sheep that are perched on his right are blessed by my Father, will inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. However, Jesus knows that none of these people are going to have an understanding of what he is saying because Christ then says that these people will say, well, when did all this happen? When did we do that? We didn't feed you. We didn't give you something to drink. We never clothed you, and we surely didn't visit you in prison. Then Jesus says, yes, you absolutely did. You helped someone who needed it, and in doing that, showed love to me. You see, the righteous in Christ's eyes 
are the ones who do without thinking, who don't seek publicity, who don't seek the ego. They just show love out of their own instincts. And Jesus says that you won't remember doing it. That is unconscious love. Often when we see a natural disaster, a tornado, a hurricane hit a town, people will stop what they're doing and help. How about those times when you're having a conversation with someone about a tough moment in their life and they tell you that they will never forget a piece of advice that you gave them or that you didn't stop loving them in their tough moment. And you respond honestly with, I don't remember doing this for you. I don't remember saying that. I hope and pray that we all have been that someone for somebody. In my 42 years of life, (laughs) my sons have tested me more than probably anyone in my life. And I hope that there is a day soon that my sons come up to me And we have that father-son moment where they say, Dad, you are so great. Even though when I messed up, you still loved me. I hope that there's a day when Thomas, my oldest, comes up to me and says, Hey, Dad, remember that time when I drove Mom's brand new car through the garage four days before you were to leave for Las Vegas for a vacation? That you were in desperate need and forced you to patch a giant hole in the house on short notice. Well, thank you for being so cool that day. (laughs) I think I would respond with, son, you're lucky that I was in the Taco Bell drive-thru when I got that phone call, because I was already in my happy place. But that day has not happened yet. Christ's mission is to radically love all. We don't focus on loving ourselves because it is clear from the Scriptures that Christ is telling us it is about how we treat others and how we treat others is is what gives us the keys to the kingdom. Now you might just be asking yourself, how is it possible to start loving unconsciously or unconditionally? The truth of that is I don't know. But when I think about my my own mortality, I think about what is going to happen when I go in front of Christ on that day. My ministry mentor, Matthew, and I had this conversation a while back about how we hope that we have that moment of not realizing all the good that we have done in life. We pictured meeting Jesus, and he would hold this up and say, Toby, over here is a lot of not so good. But over here is a lot of good. And when Jesus says this to me, my hope is that I don't say, well, Jesus, I did all this good stuff so you would notice it. Instead, I hope and I pray that in that moment, I have no idea of the good that Christ is telling me about. I have no clue of the good that I have done in my life. I hope for that day. I want to live a life where I'm not selfish for attention and can show love unconsciously, but I struggle too. What I do know is that through Christ's example, we can just see how to show love people in the way that he wants. It is clear that Jesus offers up love to nobodies, to people who think don't deserve it, to people that are less fortunate, to the absolute worst of the worst. The Pharisees questioned Christ many times about who he was showing love to. And the worst part about this is is that we've all had moments where we've seen someone receive love and we think they don't deserve it. In reality, it is our own Messiah who is giving that love. The same love that we ache for, 
the love that we are in desperate need of. God gives it unconditionally. We don't need to even ask for it because it is given freely all the time. It is so important to understand that love for others cannot be for selfish purposes. We cannot love people in hopes of how we will look because that love is not real. Jesus wants us to love no matter what on our first instinct. The instinct that we realize we don't even realize we're doing it. When we learn to do all of that all the time, we are training our hearts to be conditioned to love someone on simple instincts alone. It's like a muscle memory exercise. The more we do it, the more we can do them without even thinking about it. This is how love needs to be. And this is where love needs to be. To love unconditionally so much, just like God, to the point that it becomes instinct and second nature, just like the way Christ teaches us. As we pray to God, as we get closer and closer to the cross, I want to ask God to always help us remember that the people around us are loved by you with no exceptions. When we go before Christ in our day of judgment, I hope and pray that the book of good that we have done in life is much thicker than the book of not so good. And not only that, but let us work hard enough that the good, thick book is full of things that we have completely forgotten because we weren't seeking the attention. And when we don't seek that, that is when we know we have done it Jesus' way. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord today. Lord, let us give thanks to the Lord for you. It is right to give thanks and our praise. And Lord, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from north and south and from east and to the west to sit at your table, the kingdom of God. Amen. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus. On the night before he died, he took bread and blessed it and broke it, saying, this is my body given to you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins, Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break the bread and drink the cup, giving ourselves to you in joy and praise. At this time, I would like to invite all of our serving elders forward. And after you get the the cup of juice, make sure we hold on to that. You can take the bread and go ahead and eat it. And when you get the cup of juice, hold on to it.
cup of Christ. Let us pray. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, What will it profit you to gain the whole world and forfeit your life? Indeed, what can we give in return for our lives? At this time, let us bring our tithes and offerings together. Gracious and loving Lord, we bring these gifts to you as a token of our appreciation and love for you. Please use these gifts to do your will. In the name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let us once again come to God in prayer. Merciful and holy God, we come to you this morning with our prayers for your people, your followers, that you love so much. We come to you with our members on our minds. We, pray, we come in prayer for Chris Nelson, June Schmidt, Jacqueline McTaggart, and Lana Green. Or we ask for your healing touch given to those in your need. Or we want to ask for prayers for Hermione and her family from the loss of her mother, Tammy. Where we know that your loving embrace will hold them and will keep them. Help them to see your love. And importantly, help them to feel your love. Lord, we ask for prayers for our nation, our surrounding communities. Help us to trust in you in everything that we do and everything that requires our leadership over many. Lord, we once again ask for peace in war-torn countries 
Help them to understand your grace and help those to give grace freely. Now, Lord, we ask these things in the way that you taught us to pray. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand one more time if you are able. Now go forth in the name of the Lord. This is God's charge, to trust in Jesus Christ and to love one another as he commanded. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. Alleluia. Amen.